Good. So uh, we did not plan it, but we are really following up from the two previous talks. So I want to encourage everybody who was like confused or want to learn more about Knative to use Quick Start. It really works great, and we show kind of next steps after you use the Quick Start for eventing. And uh, hopefully we can answer some of those questions that were just mentioned that people were asking. Obviously we will not answer all of them. We'll just cover a few, but hopefully things like scaling and KDA and things like that will become more obvious. Okay, so you can think about our talk. We only have 20 minutes, 25 minutes, so we will not give you really detailed knowledge, but we want to provide kind of like a map how to get to your destination. So after you installed Quick Start for eventing, you have something running. What exactly that you have running and where do you want to take it from there? So think about it. This is like, you know, looking for the nirvana of your production, eventing, cloud native, serverless, anything that you want to run workloads. Obviously, there are some problems, and we want to show to you what kind of problems you may run into and uh, show also what we think are current best practices and where is it going in future. Next one. Okay, so uh, when we talk about uh, Knative and serverless, everybody kind of, I think, expect that it will be uh, scalable, easy to use, and so on. But with Kubernetes, you have the, all those building blocks and then you are supposed to assemble uh, what you want, kind of the previous talks before also we're talking about it. So how do you assemble those things together? So if you look on it, on extremely high level, um, when you start with Knative eventing and Knative serving, you just need to know this. So that's a good news. That's like serverless simplicity in one <laughs> slide. Just, you know, put your service, put some uh, source sync, uh, some routing for your events, mission accomplished. Next one. Okay, and then you run into this. Like you see, oh, that actually when you installed uh, Knative uh, eventing, this is just for Knative eventing, and you start looking on documentation. Oh, there are so many other things that are out there. How do you uh, put them together and which one are important to what you are doing or that uh, destination I was talking at the beginning? Okay, next one. So you can start by thinking about what you get with the quick start. So with the quick start, you get a running system. It is providing you few um, event sources and very simple broker and channel. So you can essentially do a little bit of like hello world, uh, send event, print something and uh, apply tutorial commands and you are happy. Next one. Now. What we are going today to show uh, to you is that this is very good quick start, but you should start considering uh, limitations of that quick start. And in particular, you should think about it. What is that eventing system going to do? So quick start actually, because of the simplicity, is not using any um, messaging eventing provider. So all your events that you are sending for hello world is very good. They are fast, they are in memory, but you definitely want to put some actually real messaging system. And uh, in this demo we will show today, it is using Kafka. Uh, eventing supports other systems. We do not have time to actually show all, all of them, but this is the first concern you should have when you are doing eventing, is that we all started with quick start. You want actually something that is working for you. And then I put here at the bottom, uh, as soon as you do it, you start thinking about serverless, which I mentioned at the beginning. Yes, simple, but it also should be auto-scaling and so on. So here is the KDA, HPA, and some other things. And then uh, you kind of start building on top of it. So uh, you would like to have not only like Kafka source, but other sources in your system. We will show in this demo what is uh, kind of two types of event sources you need to know about. And GitHub source is the example of it. And then finally, um, if you are running the system, as we know, always something goes wrong. So how you should be thinking about how to configure it for high availability, how to deal with things that are not working, like uh, set your default uh, retries, what to happen if you actually cannot send events to your consumers and so on. Okay, 
So we are almost there. We will be showing you very soon uh, that destination, but we did not talk about some other things uh, that you probably need to know. We will just mention them very high level. Go, go to the next one. So you can see that there are kind of logical groups you can see in K-native eventing. Starting with that initial uh, picture where you had source and sync, but you have all those also channels and brokers, and we'll talk about more why there are two different kind of abstractions that seems to overlap in functionality. Then you have uh, those underlying, very important, those underlying systems at the bottom, what I was saying, that you really need to have them. So Kinetic Eventing does not come with those systems out of the box. You probably already are using Kafka or other eventing systems, and Kinetic Eventing will integrate with them. And then you have all those kind of in the middle boxes that are providing the very important services, like that question that was before, like what is KEDA? We will go into that. Okay, so the way to uh, address it is not that we have all those boxes, but think about how do they come together or how do they connect? This is very much like uh, Kubernetes approach. You have the building blocks, but you are supposed to build, the, build things by connecting them together. Okay, so the very simple pattern, you have source, you send it to a channel or broker and you receive in sync. The layer in the middle is doing routing. Then as soon as you start doing something like that, you realize, yes, but who is doing auto-scaling for my uh, eventing systems? So for the type of events that are using HTTP, we can use built-in Knative serving. It provides the scaling for HTTP workloads. So uh, like GitHub or Pink Source or things like that, you can um, use out of the box by thinking about it. They provide the auto-scaling for you. Now, uh, there is another type of everything that is not HTTP, everything that is uh, maybe creating persistent connections to underlying messaging providers. That's a problem. So what it means? that we do, do not see exactly how those uh, providers are sending events and when to do scaling. You need additional component, and that's where the KEDA or something like that comes into picture. Essentially, it is monitoring the underlying uh, eventing provider and then doing scaling decisions for you. Okay? And then finally, this is, this is just to give you one more mental model that pretty much everything in eventing falls into that picture here. So you have something that is receiving things over HTTP, storing them into persistent eventing system, and then something else that is taking it out of the uh, eventing system and then uh, sending them to whoever wants to consume. That is like what, that's what is broker, that is what is channel, source is just one part of the picture and so on. And then, uh, we will talk a little bit in the demo. You really want to know about that letter sync or kind of how to provide reliability for your system. And then uh, when you are using it, that that letter sync works the same way for brokers and channels. Okay, okay, so almost there. So uh, one very important thing is the high availability. Again, we will not have enough time to talk about it right now. However, there is another talk at 4 p.m. which talks about high availability. We work on that. So, but the high level idea is this. The only way to provide that high availability is to run multiple copies of your uh, uh, underlying eventing infrastructure. So you create the different availability zone with Kubernetes and then run those pieces of eventing in those different availability zones. And we provide all that is necessary, for example, for Kafka to automatically recover if one availability zone go down. Very good. Okay. So um, we will go fast. This is what you get when you install Quick Start. This is just a listing you can look on the later on slides. This is just what is actually Knative eventing. So if somebody asks you what is Knative eventing, well, that's it. Means this literally what is running in your cluster when you install Quick Start for Knative eventing. Some controllers that are doing some things when you tell them to do. Next one. And this is what you uh, get when you actually install something more. Here it is uh, running uh, KEDA and uh, running Kafka source and providing some uh, necessary uh, uh, things like you can see that Kafka source is running multiple uh, uh, dispatchers 
and they actually can be configured to run in multiple availability zones. And then there is something hiding on the, in the other namespace, which is KEDA. So even though you're really running K-native eventing, you added and installed other things. And we do not show here where is the Kafka running. Okay? And then this is just the description, what are those pieces? And I think we are about to get to the, the biggest question that we get, and we find that people get very confused about K-native eventing. So why there are channels and brokers, or what is the difference between those two? So you can think about it that they do on high level similar functionality, but it is all about those little details about how you look on them and how you are processing your, your events. So like, is it Q, is it pub -sub system, and so on. So let's go to the next one. Okay, so here is the little bit like, uh, I will not go into details, I think we want to run the demo. So, and again, if you have any questions, just go to our Slack in Knative, ask those questions, and or if you are here, you know, ask us or anybody else who is around. But uh, you can think that there are some uh, questions you will be asking yourself w when you are looking on channels and brokers and uh, how you want to use them, and we also look a little bit on, in demo on that. And then finally, we are showing demo. There are steps in the demo or questions that the demo tries to answer. Again, we cannot cover all the questions and things in 10 minutes, but you can uh, look that we will kind of show the best practices and um, patterns that uh, we think are common if you are trying to run K-native eventing in production. Some things will not be covered, but that uh, just ask us for future. So, okay, so super high level in the demo. You take all those patterns we were showing, you kind of push them together. What happens? Next one? Yes. So we will, we will see that, you know, the things again map to those building blocks we were showing before, and then you have to install them to s support those uh, underlying patterns. Next one. And for demo purposes, we actually simplified it. So we will be showing like that letter uh, sync, we will be showing Apache Kafka, GitHub source, and so on, Slack channel. And then we will be showing some uh, very few uh, building blocks together. Okay, so let's do the demo. So I will do a little bit more than just uh, being the clicker. This one? The, the mic and type on the keyboard. Let's see how it works. I can, I can provide you. Yeah, it's working? Okay. Ooh, that's a bit bigger than what I had before. All right, so I'm going to show basically a couple of uh, very simple uh, patterns, uh, eventing patterns, something that should be fairly uh, straightforward for uh, most of you, I hope. Uh, so it's, we're going to, I'm going to show this through like a very simple uh, uh, application uh, that we developed just for this uh, event here. Um, and uh, so starting with, so I'm going to present this by uh, using the first pattern, which is uh, the direct delivery, which actually doesn't use eventing, but that's uh, something or, or part of eventing, uh, just the source and, uh, and the things, uh, but without any uh, persistent, um, uh, you know, layer into it. So the direct delivery pattern looks like this. Uh, you have, um, for in this application, so you have as a source, uh, a GitHub source connected to your GitHub uh, repository, then um, send uh, event via the uh, GitHub adapter to a Slack uh, adapter, which is in this case, uh, my application or our application. And then this application is forwarding event to, uh, to uh, after some transformation to, uh, to a Slack channel, right? So to show that it's working, uh, hopefully, right? There's a couple of uh, things that needs to happen in order for this to work. Um, so I run this locally on my machine inside kind. I use quick start, uh, great quick start with additional things. Uh, so if I create a new issue, uh, on top here is where uh, I can create new issues. That's the, the GitHub repo. Uh, and I think I have a script here. So that's typing on the keyboard and the mic. <laughs> uh, one second. That's a little bit difficult. All right, so 
for this, I have, there is a bug, right? And something very simple, or I can even type it, help me, please, right? Something like that. So I submit this issue. And uh, on the right-hand side, on top, we see that there is like a new Slack message that has been published with, uh, you know, the message, help me, right? Thank you, Alec. Uh, so that's very simple, extremely simple. Uh, it's very easy to use, lightweight, very few components in the, in the picture. But the problem is, uh, we can see, uh, if you're familiar with this, why well, there's no uh, guarantee of ordering, right? Uh, the second thing is, there is no persistence. And as Alex said, there's something always can go wrong, right? So. Uh, if uh, Slack is uh, having an outage for a long time, then you're going to lose event, right? Or the token expire, or you know, the uh, Slack, uh, you suddenly receive a lot of uh, messages from GitHub, then uh, there's to be a request for the application to handle, and return the 429, boom, that doesn't work anymore. We lose event. Uh, so what do we do? Right, first, let's solve the uh, ordering issue. Ordering issue can be solved by using uh, a channel, uh, and an order uh, channel, and in this case, we're going to use Kafka as a backend because Kafka preserve uh, has the uh, you know preserve order. If you use like a topic with one partition, you know then you can have this uh, FIFO kind of uh, type of delivery. Um, all right. So how does that sh uh, how does that work? Okay. So in my uh, small Slack adapter here application, I built in some. Um, uh, delay, right, or like errors. Uh, in this case, it's going to be a delay. So if I do a little bit of time, of time sensitive, this one, let's say, uh, if I paste this message as a comment in the comment, and then, up. so I will post this comment. This comment is going to trigger a delay in the application, in the Slack application of three seconds. All right, and then I will paste this one. So in the, um, if you look here, I'm still showing the, uh, uh, on the, on the right-hand side. So I still show the thread of the direct delivery, right? So it's still running uh, in the background. So, and we see that in this case, the messages arrived in uh, out of order, right? No worries before, sorry, of the delay. So when you're having a conversation, it's not great, right? Uh, so I have another Slack, Slack channel uh, receiving the event coming from uh, this other pattern, right, from the, the Kafka channel. Uh, and in this case, if I open the thread, uh, we see that the uh, messages are uh, in order. Right. One second. I just need it. All right. Thank you. Um, so how much time do I have still? Do you know? Plenty. plenty of time. All right, wonderful. All right, so it's very good. So in this case, just by doing this, uh, uh, we solve the ordering issue that we were having. Um, uh, also, uh, because uh, Kafka has a very long queue, it's not like an in-memory queue, uh, we also solved the uh, too many requests uh, issue that we were having. Uh, one of the cons is like, well, now we need to bring into the picture a lot more of eventing, right? It's a uh, uh, Kafka channel, uh, like uh, also a, a real Kafka, right? Uh, Apache Kafka uh, cluster into the picture. Um, and another uh, con is like, um, well, it doesn't solve all the issues. We still have uh, issues that can be uh, uh, lost. Um, so how we solve that, right? So the third pattern here, it's more like a best practice also kind of thing, right? Um, is to add some retry uh, in the, um, uh, the first thing is to do is to add retries in the, uh, in the, uh, in the delivery of uh, event for the, in the Kafka channel, right? So in this case, um, uh, I added like a, a retry of five, uh, so try five time uh, using the linear back of policy and wait one second before retrying. Now I need my two hands. Uh, so here we see, if I type this um, special command, uh, that will trigger, the Slack adapter uh, will trigger like an error, which is not permanent. 
Um, it's not a permanent error, so it will trigger like uh, 10 minutes, thank you. Uh, it will fail like for uh, three times, and then after a while, uh, the message will be uh, uh, posted. Uh, so I received the, uh, the message here, right? This is KN channel, so that's the channel with the uh, delivery guarantee. Right? Uh, I received the, the message. If I go back to the KN direct uh, Slack uh, channel, I open the thread, and I see that nothing is happening here, right? Because uh, I, don't, I didn't receive the, the, the message because uh, uh, the GitHub adapter does not retry. Um, all right, thank you. Uh, so that's good. Uh, we solved uh, these less errors, right? So, I mean, we'll cover a little bit more uh, in, the, in the type of error that we can handle by using uh, retries. Uh, that's good for like more transient errors, like uh, Slack is having like a, a, blim, a blimp, right? Uh, it's down for like 10 seconds or something like this. Uh, but that doesn't work really well with um, the poison pill kind of uh, messages where, you know, it's sending a, a message to Slack uh, adapter, and, but uh, uh, maybe the Slack adapter is trying to check for your picture on GitHub and you deleted your account and it doesn't work. And it fails, uh, something like this, something a bit uh, uh, stupid. In this case, in that, uh, so what you want to do, and also it's important to not also block the, uh, the, the delivery of event. So many times you want to have like a, a short retry period uh, and then um, have the event sent to a delivery uh, dead letter sync, right, uh, to keep the flow going. Um, so, uh, so for the uh, for the channel, so you, then you can also configure a dead letter sync that we call a sync because it can be anything. It doesn't have to be, um, you know, it can be really anything, right, the sync. So let me show you this. In that case, how it works. Um, so I have this comment special comment that will trigger a special, I mean, like a permanent error in the Slack adapter. Um, so which means that um, the event is never going to be uh, delivered uh, in, this, um, in this channel, but instead at some point it should appear uh, in, this, uh, in this channel if uh, we need to wait like, I think about three seconds, something like that, something like this. Um, do we receive it? I don't know. Yeah, one minute ago. So we saw the uh, the message appearing in the uh, in the Slack uh, KN DLS uh, channel. Uh, so in production, obviously, you don't want to send your event to a Slack channel, right? So you want to send the, so the DLS is more like something that is uh, highly available and and persistent and uh, uh, and. Uh, uh, to make sure that you know you don't lose it, right? So if you do, do all these, the chances that you're going to lose events are pretty slim in that case, and it's always going to be somewhere, arriving somewhere. All right. Finally, uh, the last um, pattern, let's say, uh, as Alex said, as Alex said uh, many times, we we get this very often. The question is, when do you pick broker versus uh, a channel? And we see that. Uh, one is a big difference between channel and broker. One thing is the ordering, right? Uh, you don't have any guarantee of ordering in uh, when you use broker. Um, for some, I mean, there is like a uh, asterisk in this one, but uh, that's okay. Um, so, and also uh, you want to use uh, broker when uh, you have like multiple sources and you want to do some. Uh, uh, filtering on the on the content of uh, of these sources. Uh, so in this uh, very small uh, demo here, so I extended the uh, the um, this GitHub to uh, Slack uh, application uh, with multiple uh, a little bit more sources, uh, sending the event to a, a broker by by back by uh, Kafka, um, and then having. Uh, send this event to uh, some sort of aggregator where in this case, I don't really care about ordering, it's an aggregation. Uh, so I can forward this to, uh, I can use a broker in this case and then send the, uh, the event to Ken Broker. Um, so I have also, um, maybe, so I have like this special channel for that, uh, Slack channel. Um, 
So I can create like, let's say a new, and we see, uh, we saw already, I think, uh, ta -ta -ta. Oh, we didn't see that. Maybe this one is broken, we see. Uh, if I create a new issue, and I call it like, uh, hello, very simple. So that's uh, sending this, um, I'm here, right? I send, uh, I'm on my uh, demo 22 uh, GitHub, send an event to this GitHub adapter for what it to broker, which then do some sort of filtering. I'm only interested in uh, event type issues and uh, coming from the demo uh, 22 repo. Oh, it seems the audio works. But the demo doesn't seem to be working in this case. That's all right. Um, all right, so it doesn't make sense to go and, and do the filtering on the other side because it's not working. Uh, and then uh, that's, um, so if we go to the pro and cons, uh, it's like, uh, as I said, right? So in this case, uh, it's, it's, it's simpler in some sense that you only need like one broker usually uh, inside your uh, domain, right? Uh, versus like having multiple uh, channels. Uh, you have like uh, built-in support for uh, filtering uh, and, uh, but as I said before also, um, there is no like uh, uh, any uh, ordering guarantees. And I think we can go back to the presentation, yes, sir, right? So one thing, uh, I think we should mention that uh, One thing we should mention um, that all that demo code is available on GitHub. So you should be able to reproduce that uh, demo. And uh, even that last part that did not work, you should be able to make it work. And if not, come back to us with questions. Next, next slide. <clears throat> and that's essentially is what we want you to get out of this uh, short talk. That. Uh, Knative is all those building blocks, but it is, should not be uh, like too much or too many or feeling overwhelmed with complexity. They were all put together to achieve some goals. We hope now it is a bit uh, easier to understand how to put those blocks together. We did not go through all of them, but you find all of it in documentation. Also at this talk at 4 p.m. we will be talking a little more about high availability uh, auto scaling and CADA, so you can see some other blocks, how they come together. And then uh, this is work in progress. So as other speakers were saying, uh, uh, join us in uh, Knative Slack, but also uh, if something is not working, bring those issues and then maybe help us to fix it or make it better. I think that that's about it. Uh, I think we have two minutes for questions, maybe. so. Thank you. Okay. So that's great, folks. Thank you very much for that. But I was wondering, is there a future where we are looking at simplifying the choices for the folks who are implementing this? Well, this is great, amazing, but I see, I see that uh, it could be complex in, for certain use cases. So the question is about uh, complexity or why fundamentally we have so many pieces. They are needed, but also we are going to simplify them. So one piece that I was showing actually here will no longer be there soon which is some like bridge that is doing auto scaling. And uh, we want also to make it so out of the box, you could uh, get all of it running and you really do not need to put or figure out how to connect all those building blocks together. Then if you want, you can, you know, put things if you want. So I have a question. Can all my needs be served by broker and not use channel at all? In theory, yes. Depends what exactly you want to do. I think there are some use cases where that ordering and the tight control over who sees and how events are processed in queue is very, very useful. But yes, short answer is yes. 
Yeah, and also there's for compliance reasons. Sometimes you want to really uh, uh, isolate some of the events from other events, right? You don't want like, to have like a big bucket, but you want to say, okay, this one for compliance reason has to be in this, uh, in this, you know, together, not mixed with other events, right? These kind of things. And ordering, we talked about it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Oh, I, there is one more. Uh, Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that was a great presentation. Thank you, guys. I was just gonna ask: Does it support other Git providers besides GitHub, or is it mainly focused on GitHub for now? So we are the Knative is essentially API, and then there are different implementations for the API. So the different uh, providers are supported. We have many eventing sources, and we also hope to have many more in future. So that um, hopefully it will be very easy for people to add and maintain those. There are about 40 of those pre-canned sources available on the um, Knative documentation site, and um, we'll be doing a contrib fest on Wednesday to um, polish some of those up. So kind of following up on that, is there gonna be like a a provider interface that's going to be standardized eventually? You're asking uh, how to add new providers? Like, yeah. Yes. Is there plans for a, a standard interface? We, we, we see it ourselves a little bit, but because we are like rewriting Kafka, that would be very good to you know, reuse parts of implementations between different providers. And that uh, I think over time when we have more, that would be very natural to have those well-tested building blocks. Like I was showing the dispatcher and receiver pattern that provides like 80% of your implementation for you when you want to implement broker or channel in, or source in Knative eventing. Okay, thank you. Okay. Thank you, Lionel and Alexander. Go ahead. <laughs> no, no.